World War II German Army Field Marshal Erich von Manstein was considered by many to have been Hitler's most brilliant general and the ablest commander in their army. At the time of war, the poet Virgil once wrote a tale of arms and the man. The outcome of battle hinges on numbers, technology, training, and other impersonal factors, not to mention weather and terrain. No matter how dire the odds, however, the genius of an individual commander can still triumph. If ever the German army needed a genius, it was during the winter of 1942-43. Erich von Manstein was Germany's greatest commander, and the Battle of Kharkov was his greatest victory. So how good was Erich von Manstein as a general? What were his most decisive victories? Here, in this video, we are going to show you Erich von Manstein, Germany's greatest general during World War II. So before diving into the video, hit subscribe for a front row so that you won't miss out on our interesting content and be a part of the adventures. So ready for the ride? Let's get started. Fritz Erich Georg Eduard von Manstein, born on the 24th of November 1887 in Berlin, was a German general field marshal in the army of Nazi Germany during World War II. Born into an aristocratic Prussian family with a long history of military service, Manstein joined the army at a young age and saw service on both the Western and Eastern Front during the First World War. He rose to the rank of captain by the end of the war and was active in the interwar period, helping Germany rebuild its armed forces. His father was Eduard von Lewinsky, a general of the Prussian military and an aristocrat of that same state. The Prussian state was the largest of the dozens of German states in the early 19th century. His mother was Helen von Sperling. Erich was his parents' 10th son, and because Helene's younger sister, Hedwig, was unable to have children with her husband, Georg von Manstein, they allowed the couple to adopt Erich. Manstein began his active career as an officer in 1906 and served in World War I on both the Western and Russian fronts. Rising through the ranks, he was promoted to Major General in 1936 and to Lieutenant General in 1938. At the start of World War II, he served as Chief of Staff to General Gerd von Rundstedt in the invasion of Poland in September 1939. Manstein had in the meantime devised a daring plan to invade France by means of a concentrated armoured thrust through the Ardennes Forest. Though this plan was rejected by the German High Command, Manstein managed to bring it to the personal attention of Adolf Hitler, who enthusiastically adopted it. He ordered the generals and their staff to incorporate elements of it into the wider plan for the invasion of France. This invasion ultimately came later than the Western Allies expected. After the quick conquest of Poland in the autumn of 1939, a period of unusual stability was seen as Germany prepared for its next move, and the British and French desperately tried to rearm and conscript hundreds of thousands of troops. When hostilities did resume in the spring of 1940, it was only for the purposes of a brief campaign in which Denmark and Norway were quickly occupied by the Nazis. Thus, it was not until the early summer of 1940 that the long-awaited invasion of France was initiated. On the 10th of May, the Germans made their initial move into Belgium and the Netherlands, as planned originally. Then as the French and the British expeditionary force moved northeast to engage them in Belgium, a second pincer attack was launched through the Ardennes into northeastern France as von Manstein had counseled. The weeks that followed would prove exactly how effective this strategy was. The British and the French were not able to deal with the ferocity of the German onslaught in mid-May 1940. Divisions of German troops, led by groups of panzer tanks, which never seemed to stop moving day or night, charged westwards at their lines. Within a week or so, the German front lines were nearing the English Channel. Even back in Berlin, 
Hitler was astonished by the speed of the army's advance. As a result, von Manstein's plan had largely worked. The British Expeditionary Force and much of the French army now found themselves trapped between two separate German armies, one in Belgium and one in northeastern France, which had proceeded into the country following the Arden strategy von Manstein had championed. Faced with this impossible situation, the British began retreating to the port town of Dunkirk, which they still held desperate to remove their forces from France back to Britain, a feat that was achieved in the space of a week in late May and early June. Over 330,000 British soldiers were evacuated, a feat made possible by a combination of the desire of Hermann Goering, one of the senior Nazi leaders, to claim the glory for himself by having his Luftwaffe effectively bomb the expedition into oblivion while trapped in Dunkirk along with distractions created by the remnants of the French army elsewhere in northeast France and the sheer daring of the British rescue operation, one which involved hundreds of merchant ships and fishing boats. It was only for this reason that von Manstein's plan had not achieved total success in capturing the British expeditionary force in its entirety. The Germans entered Paris on the 14th of June, 1940. The French government had fled into exile days earlier and the city was taken unopposed. Thereafter, France was divided into an occupied zone in the north and west and a region in the south and east, which was handed over to a collaborationist French regime based out of the town of Vichy. No sooner were they ensconced in Paris than German attention turned towards defeating Britain. As an island, with a more substantial navy than Germany's. This would prove altogether more difficult. There were competing arguments as to how Germany should proceed within the army high command. One fraction believed an extended blockade of Britain by sea and air should be used to force the country into submission. But others favored a brief bombing campaign followed by an amphibious landing across the English Channel. This would knock Britain out of the war quickly and ensure that Germany did not have to worry about a threat in Western Europe before it turned eastwards again. Von Manstein was in favor of this latter strategy, but he, like all others who supported it, were overruled in October 1940 when Hitler ultimately took the decision to postpone the invasion of Britain and instead begin preparing for an invasion of the Soviet Union to the east. By this time, von Manstein had been promoted to the rank of a full general and had been awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross in recognition of his contribution to the invasion of France. He was also appointed as the commander of 56th Panzer Group in March 1941 as part of the planning for what would eventually be termed Operation Barbarossa, named after a medieval German emperor. This was the tactical plan for the invasion of the Soviet Union, the largest land military operation ever undertaken. It would involve over three and a half million German army personnel and over 600,000 motorized vehicles. By now, Hitler and his generals were convinced of the merits of short, fast campaigns where they quickly overwhelmed their enemies. As such, the plan for Operation Barbarossa was to invade the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941, proceeding east and northeast, taking cities like Kiev along the way, and ultimately seizing Leningrad and Moscow before the winter set in. With this done, the Russians would almost certainly capitulate like the French before them. Von Manstein was assigned to the Northern Wing Army Group North, which was to thrust through the Baltic states before ultimately moving to capture Leningrad. Operation Barbarossa was an enormous success to begin with. Von Manstein had been promoted to oversee the 11th Army after its previous commander, Colonel General Eugen Ritter von Schobert, was killed in a plane crash. In 1948, the British arrested von Manstein, having been pressured to do so by the Soviets. He was placed on trial along with several other senior commanders of the Wehrmacht in the autumn of 1949. 
There, he faced nearly 20 different charges, all relating to his conduct as a commander on the Eastern Front, notably following the invasion of the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941. His term was first commuted to 12 years early in 1950, and then he was released early in May 1953. There were many reasons why his sentence was drastically reduced in this way. In conclusion, as a military advisor to the West German government in the mid-1950s, he helped re-establish the armed forces. Manstein died near Munich in 1973. His memoir, Verlorene Siege, 1955, translated into English as Lost Victories, was highly critical of Hitler's leadership and dealt with only the military aspects of the war, ignoring its political and ethical contexts. What do you think of Erich von Manstein? Does he deserve the title Germany's greatest general? Let us know in the comment section below. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you won't miss out on our future contents.